Hi everyone, this is Brian Neal with TradeBeFree.com and just wanted to uh, go over some of the trades I looked at looked at today and, and took today and review a few of them that we have on right now. First one I want to show you is ATI, it's Allegheny Technologies, and here's a company, another one of these material stocks that reported, and we're seeing quite a few of these right now, and these tend not to move as well, tend not to gap as higher and move as well. Um, out of good patterns after the earnings beat. But this one set up a pretty good pattern here. I noticed this later in the morning. I saw this pullback after the first move higher. We had two hammer candles here in a row and we started breaking this candle and I thought that'd be a good opportunity to jump in on this sort of rounding pattern here towards these these highs. And so I jumped in a little above this candle right here and had an idea to put the stop in below this candle here. The trade got off to a slow start, so I took part of it off at about a five ten cent profit, and then just sort of waited on it, gave it more time, and it went up to 18.80 or so, and it started looking a little weaker up there, and we were getting pretty close to 11 a.m. And so at that point, you know, this move from let's say handle to handle forms here. A move above that into the highs is less likely to happen and so I just took it off around 1875 1880 and so I got caught that move about a 35 cent move the other one I looked at today was AOI now applied optics I thought it would come back down to the 9 EMA or 20 EMA at some point over the past few days it came fairly close to it on Friday didn't quite get there and it started rebounding, and we had a bullish candlestick pattern over the past two days. And I thought, you know what, if it gets above these pre-market highs, or at least yesterday's high, which I think was around the same, 97.75 and 98. Yeah, so if it got over 98, I was going to go ahead and jump in on a trade. But I saw it pull back initially, and I thought, well, you know what, every time over the past several days it's pulled back like this early on, it's formed this reversal pattern here on a five minute chart and gone up a lot higher and actually broke the prior day's high. So now in this case, I wanted to wait until it, it hit the, the VWAP here, the nine VWAP, and I wanted to see a good strong five minute candle followed by a breaking of that candle before I jumped in hoping for a move above 97.80 and, and 98 here, the pre-market highs. So I thought we could get a move up to 100 off that level and uh, got off to a decent start, started to slow down here. It started to make its move at this point here, and then it just went sideways. And we got pretty close to that 11 a.m. mark, 11 a.m. mark where I started to wrap things up, and it was still having a hard time getting back over the VWAP here. And so I took it off for a small profit, I think 20 cents or something. You know, look for another setup either later on this afternoon or tomorrow, probably tomorrow. And the other one, more exciting trade, was on Bofi. I actually jumped back in yesterday because yesterday we talked about the rounding bottom pattern and how it was hitting the it was hitting the 200-day moving average. I got out of that first swing trading position over here at around uh, 2510, 2505, I think it was. And I saw later in the afternoon it was starting to break out of that 200-day moving average. And so I jumped back in, and this morning it. It surged off that. Uh, There's actually three tests of that 2530, 2550 level over the past uh, few months, I believe. Let me see. Pattern I didn't really uh, see clearly yesterday, but this high here, 2515, uh, 2519, and then the 200 day moving average. You know, when you see it find resistance at that point, at one point like that, uh, three times, and then it finally breaks out, that's usually a good time to buy especially if you have a larger rounding pattern within a longer term uptrend. So, you know, we've got this sort of rounding bottom pattern going here and then we've got if you look at a 2-year chart, we've got a you know, pretty decent long term uptrend going. It hasn't reached new highs yet, all-time highs, but this is pretty good. So, uh, the only problem with it is that the banks have been sort of slow to react to uh, some of the good news recently and so they really haven't been moving much. And so I kept a small position, though. I put a small position in here and kept that on through the swing trade. And, you know, went up about, I think, 4% this morning after breaking through that resistance level. 
So a lot of times you can do that. Later in the afternoon, you can find these stocks that are breaking those key resistance areas. And if they hold up well, and if they break out with some good volume like this one did here on the break of the prior day's high the next day or the prior prior uh, day before the close, those can be good entry points for these type of trades. And they often move up a few percent shortly thereafter. So, so we got that one. And SGMS made a big move yesterday. A lot of times after you get that first day move that's really strong, uh, if it breaks the, the highs of that day the next day, it often makes a follow-on move. So here we can see that this stock has gone up another I think 5% or so since breaking that high. I had a message in with my broker, and I got the message kind of late. And when I looked at it, it had already moved like three, uh, 30 cents or so, more than 1%. So usually with this kind of trade, you see like a, you know, I might see a 3% move or so. That's a pretty good move out of this pattern. When you have a very strong day the prior day and it breaks the prior that day's high the next day, that's often a good time to get in, but they don't usually move that that uh, far. In this case, SGMS had made a big move yesterday, larger than than most of these trading setups have, you know, the day prior. So it moved a little bit more. Um, I think it moved five, six percent or so out of that pattern. So missed that. I didn't want to chase it because, you know, if you don't get in within one percent the average profit out of this or the average rise out of this pattern once it breaks the prior day's high is probably in the neighborhood of 3 or 4% that same day. So it's a good day trade, but if you get in late, you don't want to chase it. So I didn't do that, and I just kind of kept my powder dry. I'm still waiting for some of the uh, big earnings reports that I think we'll have uh, later this week. And so far we've seen them on the most of the material stocks. We have a lot of, we've had a lot of banking reports and those stocks tend not to move as much out of the uh, or form the earnings eruptions pattern and break out of it after the uh, earnings release. We're also writing Omer too and Omer is uh, or had another good day earlier on it actually broke the, the prior day's high it hit the top Bollinger Band though and it's finding resistance there and it's pulling back we'll see if it catches its footing later on today and and trends higher in the close. I might go ahead and cut that uh, if it gets much below uh, 2230 for a small profit. But that had a chance to make a really big move, and it may still do that. So we'll see how it how it shapes up later on this afternoon. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, later this week we're going to have some big earnings eruptions trades, and those trades will, you know, generally move anywhere from three percent to ten percent within an hour or two, and that's pretty much the norm out of those patterns so get ready for those and um, we'll get past the material stocks reporting and the banking stocks reporting and uh, we'll have some more good trading setups okay and applied optics it still may break out of 98 and make another move higher you know we've got a week now until over a week now until the earnings release you know like i said if we get a good report and some good news during that release. We could see a big earnings eruption trade, the kind that moved 10, 20 percent or more within a day or two. So, looking forward to that trading setup too. Until then, I'm just going to raise that stop to the prior day's low. You know, we'll see how far it goes.